Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Firstly, we do understand during these times people are not traveling, but these presentations are meant to educate and inspire you for the destination that might be on your bucket list. We love talking about travel. We're very excited to talk to you today about the popular destination of the Dominican Republic and the different areas that there are to vacation there. A quick note, if you have any questions that come in, please pop them into the chat box and we'll do our best to an answer them during our presentation. So for those of you who don't know myself, my name is Kimberly Green. I work out of the Dartmouth, Nova Scotia store. I've been in the industry for a total of 13 years with sell off vacations uh, for the past eight. I do have a passion for travel and I try to experience as many des different destinations as I can. I cannot wait to travel again when I'm able. Today, I'll be chatting about my travels to Punta Cana and the Lower Mana areas. Also joining me today is Amanda Mashenko. She's coming to us from the Saskatoon, Saskatchewan store. Uh, so Amanda, can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Kim. I'm so happy to join today so that I can talk about my travels in Porta Plata, Dominican Republic. I have been in the travel industry for over 17 years and was sell off vacations for the past five years. My favorite thing about being in travel is having the ability to help the first time travelers. I just love to be able to be a part of that. That's great, Amanda. We're definitely very lucky to make our client dreams come true. We also have our Air Canada Vacations rep Judy Munden on with us again, and she'll be talking about the area of Samana. Welcome, Judy. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely, Kim. Thanks so much for having me with you guys again today. It's always fun to be a part of these um, great travel talks. So my name is Judy Munden, as Kim has mentioned. I'm the area sales manager for Air Canada Vacations, and I'm based here in Halifax. I look after all of Atlantic Canada and enjoy working very closely with the sell-off vacation teams here in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland. And I've been with Air Canada Vacations since 2005, so 16 years. Wow, that's amazing. You've always been such a great support system for us, so we're very, very lucky to have you. Uh, so one of the places I've actually never been to is Samana, so I do have a few questions there for you. Uh, so what sure. makes Samana such an interesting and a unique destination? Well, let me first of all tell you, Kim, that Samana is my favorite de destination in the entire Dominican Republic, and I'm excited to tell you and your viewers today all about it. So you ask what makes Samana such a unique destination. It, very, it is very much a unique destination of the Dominican Republic. It's because of the European flavor, believe it or not. Um, there's a French influence and an Italian influence and certain areas of this region of the Dominican were discovered by the Spanish back in the 1700s, believe it or not. There's two different regions of the Samana. There's the town of Samana, um, which has lots of historical churches. It's a historical town. There's even a Scotiabank, believe it or not. Um, and then you also have the area of Las Terrenas, which is very much a beach town. It actually used to be a fishing village, believe it or not. So lots of outdoor cafes and shopping areas and cool art galleries. Both both of the regions or cities and towns of the Samana are very, very fun areas to get out and discover. You know so, so much about it. I can't wait to get there someday. So how many times have you been to the Samana area yourself? Well, I think I've lost count, but it's been at least eight times and I honestly can't wait to get back. Uh, well, I know that there's a few different hotel choices there. So approximately how far from the airport to the resorts are, are in Samana? Sure. So there's actually, as I mentioned, two different areas. Um, we deal with about five, six hotels in this in this area of the Dominican and Samana. All are uniquely different. So if you're going to the resorts close to Las Terrenas, you're about 20 to 30 minutes drive from the airport to those resorts. Or if you're heading to the town of Samana itself, you're about 50 to 60 miles uh, from the airport. Important to note, the airport in, in Samana is a very, um, it's new, it, it hasn't been there that long, and it's a beautiful uh, airport, and there's not a lot of fly, uh, planes that fly in and out of there, so the process to get through customs and in and out is very, very quick there, so it's easy transfer to and from Las Arenas and Samana regions. Oh, well, I definitely seen some aerial shots there. The roads seem amazing. So I think a half an hour transfer would be quite entertaining to see some sights. Uh, so while you're there, I know it's more of a countryside location. Is there many areas to do any shopping? 
Oh, you know, us ladies, we love shopping and some men as well. Absolutely. The shopping in this region is really, really good. And in my personal opinion, if you don't leave your resort and either go into the town of Samana or the town of Las Terrenas, you're really missing out on the beauty of this destination. Um, you know, these are smaller towns. It is the Dominican Republic. You're not going to find a lot of like Gucci or Louis Vuitton or anything like that, but they do have unique things to shop for. In Samana itself, I always enjoy shopping there because there's a local grocery store and there's no better way to run into um, a grocery store and, and see what the, the people, the locals are using uh, for their groceries or what they're buying. You can always pick up some really cheap, perhaps bottles of alcohol to bring home, a few snacks if you're looking for your Lay's chips or something along that line. Um, and in the town of Samana as well, they also have a Scotia Bank right in the town. So if you need some instant uh, instant bank cash, you can do that. They also in Samana have a Malacon uh, where all the artisans who do their paintings and crafts and all of that stuff, you can shop on the Malacon and it's really, really popular when the small cruise ships come into this region. And uh, so you you can shop there. I always suggest that if you're going to the Malacon to see the artisans to go after the cruise ships. Uh, passengers have already purchases because you can get some better deals. They've already made their money for the day, so they're more willing to barter. And then and in the town of Las Serenas, there's lots of show shopping there as well. Outdoor cafes, really, really cool, amazing art galleries there as well. So again, lots of shopping in both Samana and Las Terrenas. Things you may want to shop for is Laramar, which is a blue stone, which is only found on the island. So Dominican amber and La Laramar are um, jewelry that most people will bring up when they're doing their shopping in those regions. Oh, seems like there's tons to do. I, I really like the grocery store one. My husband always asks for something odd from every place I travel. So I visit a lot of local grocery stores in my day. Uh, but once yeah. we're done our shopping and we're looking for something a little bit more unique and we're done with the beach, is there any excursions from that area? Absolutely. So Samana Bay, for us here in Atlantic Canada, we... Um, probably don't need to go to Samana to watch whales because we're so fortunate here in Atlantic Canada. But for other people outside of Atlantic Canada, the actual humpback whales actually go to the Samana Bay to um, do their mating season during the winter months. So you'll see a lot of people from other areas of Canada that are whale watchers that go to Samana, do a whale watching excursion. That's really, really fun. Uh, Playa Rencon is a beach in that area that's been rated one of the top beaches in the world. And it's it's a really, really cool beach. The, the, it's stunning. It's spectacular. There's absolutely no resorts located on this beach area. And when you're coming to the beach, if actually you go to the left instead of the right, there's a mountain range area where a river runs from the top of the mountain into the ocean. So it's a really cool experience to get in the ocean, swim in the salt water, and then you can go, go jump off into the river and wash all the, um, the salt off you. And if uh, you are a person who loves a fresh seafood, in Playa Racon, they actually have fishermen right there on the beach that will cast their, um, their rod, get a fish, um, take it and put it on an open pit fire in a cast iron frying pan and you can buy yourself from some uh, nice fresh fish and it doesn't get any fresher than that. Now my family is from Newfoundland so I'm pretty you know uh, I've tasted some pretty good um, fantastic seafood but I have to say on Playa Recon Beach it was pretty amazing. Also quickly wanted to mention El Limon Waterfalls. This is a cool excursion you can do in this region as well where you can take a horseback and you'll be guided by a guide to the falls and I think there's probably about a thousand steps to go down and you walk down to the waterfalls and you can swim underneath the falls and also for people who want to get outdoors and get muddy and dirty and do some fun. There's Jeep safaris that will take you through all the um, the forest areas and that's fun stuff or zip lining as well, Kim. So there's certainly lots to do, shopping as well as excursions in Samana. Judy, have me sold. I hope next time you can come with me to be my tour guide. I think I'll get the most out of my vacation there. It looks like a great spot. Absolutely. And all the agents that sell off vacation. There's something unique in Samana, the resorts as well for everybody. There's resorts for adults only. There's resorts that are family. There's a resort that's located on a hill that overlooks the bay. They where you take an elevator down to the beach. There's also a resort that's on an island where you can only get there by water, sh water shuttle. So I know you and all the team at Sell Off Vacations will be able to find the right fit for the right person when they're going to Samana. And I'm with you. I'm going with you. So let's go soon. 
Wow, such awesome information about Samana. Shannon, have we had any questions come in yet? Hi, everybody. Uh, we have a couple in here so far. Um, I just want to say too that I've been to Dominican several times, uh, Punta Cana several and Puerto Plata several, but I've not had the opportunity to get to Samana uh, yet at all. So um, certainly on my bucket list as well. So many places to explore, but it sounds awesome. Sounds very unique um, from the other areas of Dominican. Um, so the couple questions I have here, um, and I'm probably going to put these to you, Judy, since you're the sure. kind of the pro for Samana right now. Sure. Um, someone said they heard Survivor is taped in, in that area. Is that true or false? Oh, absolutely. So if you stay close to Las Salinas at a resort called the Viva Wyndham V, there's a beautiful stretch of beach there that you can walk along for miles and miles miles and miles and I've actually stayed there a couple of times and one time when I was turning the corner I saw this whole beach set up um, that looked like Survivor so we rushed over there was nobody there filming mm -hmm. at that time but we came to learn that the uh, country of Turkey films their episodes of Survivor in Samana in that region so if you're a true, true Survivor oh. fan without a doubt um, head over to the Viva Wyndham V in uh, Las Terrenas area and you can actually probably at certain times uh, watch them filming that so it's pretty cool. That sounds awesome. Definitely yeah. great for those survivors fans that are still out there. Um, another question here, Judy, is um, there was a bridge in one of the pictures that we had up there on the screen. Do you know what that bridge is in the picture? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's called the Bridge to Nowhere and it's located um, right at the Bahia Principe Keokoa in Samana, which is located right in the town of Samana. And um, it's a couple of bridges that are all linked together. Originally back in the 1960s, 60s there was a restaurant built out there at the end of it but that's um, no longer there's still uh, some of the remnants of that out there but the beach at Keokoa is not a long walking beach it's actually the beach that I mentioned you can take an elevator down to the beach so yeah. a lot of the um, tourists as well as locals when they want to do a walk instead of walking along the beach they walk walk along the bridge to nowhere which is really really cool so you just keep walking out and um, they always say do it before the noontime sun gets up because it's really hot with the reflection of the sun on the water but it's really cool just to walk out there and I have to say I've been to the Keokoa probably about four times I haven't got up the energy to leave my launch yeah. here to do it oh but I certainly see people to do it. it is it's a lovely way to get your steps in for sure oh it looks the scenery there looks amazing Amazed. I definitely would want to take that in for sure yeah uh, thanks so much Judy the next question here is someone asked what about whale watching I know that's quite popular in Sam Samana Absolutely, yeah. So whale watching is very, very popular because the humpback whales come into Samana Bay for the winter months to do their mating season in there. So there's probably no time that you wouldn't find them during the mating season. So absolutely right. lots of people from Canada okay. go there. Yeah, yeah, we have, I mean, I'm in Nova Scotia, so we certainly have lots of options to see them from here, but uh, not, right. all, not all across the country. So it's a great opportunity if you get to that area. Um, another question here is, uh, must have a golf a golf fan on, on viewing us asking, any, are there any golf courses near Samana? Not in that region, unfortunately, no. 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 Okay. Okay. But who's to say it won't come, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes. Um, and another, the last one here before we uh, keep going with the presentation is, where is the best snor snorkeling in Dominican in general? Would you have any idea on that? Or maybe Amanda or Kim could speak about that. Well, I can say that in Samana, you can snorkel right off the beach um, in okay. the town of Las Terrenas. Um, I've seen them snorkeling off the beach in um, the Keokoa as well, the Bahia Principe Keokoa with the elevator. And then there's a resort on the island, which I mentioned, which is the um, Keolaventado. Again, it's a Grand Bahia Principe property, and they have beautiful snorkeling right off the beach there. There's also snorkeling excursions as well, for okay. sure. Yeah. Awesome. I know I've, I've been, like I said, I've been in to, to other areas in Dominican. I know, I know I've done uh, Porta Plata at snorkeling there and, and it was great. It was off the shore a bit because um, a little bit rougher and in, in, in closer to the shore sometimes. But I, I do remember a great little snorkeling trip right off there just from the resort, actually. Yeah. So there's lots of options. Kim, I think you were going to say something there. Uh, I'm not a snorkeler. I haven't no? tried it. It's okay. actually a fear of mine. All right, perfect. <laughs> Do you have anything to add to that, Amanda? 
Um, I think that there's definitely a few places uh, in the Punta Cana area that has some decent snorkeling as well. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely options anywhere you go in Dominican for snorkeling. That, that's for certain. So that so that was the last question we had for this this part. We'll we'll get some more uh, later on in the presentation so you guys can continue on and let us uh, learn about the rest of Dominican. But put in your questions if uh, if you have any, please put them in throughout the presentation. We'd love to answer them. Let's jump over to you, Kim. So Kim, what can you tell us about your most recent trip to Punta Cana? What were some of the resorts that you managed to see? Which was your favorite and why? Well, Amanda is very lucky to squeeze in a, a short trip in 2020. Uh, I actually arrived home March 13th, the day that the Canadian advisory was announced. Uh, but on this trip, I actually snuck down to the Bahia Prince Bay uh, Amber Adults Only. It is a complex of, I think, six or seven properties. So I did kind of venture on and seen most of them. I did spend a day at the Fantasia, the, ho the hotel or resort of castles. That was amazing. Um, I actually did a split stay, which is very popular to do in Dominican. A lot of hotels are close together. Transportation options are really good. Uh, so the last part of my journey, we went to the new Majestic Mirage. Um, I did want to check this one out because I do have some low repeats that went in that area and I, I definitely understand why they go back. Um, just the grandeur of the resort, the dining options were great, the pace of the property, uh, the room locations, they all have pool views. Um, I definitely think that was one for a little bit of fun during the day, but a nice relaxing atmosphere as well. Really fun, Kim, to do a split stay on any destination, especially in the Dominican. Hey, you get to see a couple of different areas. I feel like some people don't like the packing and packing up again, but I really like it. Um, I'm kind of the, I like to move on and see as many as I can. So for a typical person like myself who likes to stay busy, it's a unique opportunity. Absolutely. So myself, I've been lucky enough to travel to Punta Cana three times. But for you, Kim, what makes Punta Cana such a popular destination for Canadians? Well, for myself and most of my clients, I really think that a lot of people like the Dominican because of the short flight times. I know from us to the Atlantic, we can get most of the Caribbean in about four hours. Some of Canada a little bit longer than that. I think the top selling feature is the long, long sandy beaches. People can walk for miles, kind of venture into the town. Um, I also think the selection of hotel has a great feel there. Um, whether you're looking for something with entertainment or water park or adult only, family friendly, just such a range that you can find something for everybody. Awesome. So when I went to Punta Cana, my resort was right on Bavero Beach. But in general, how typically far is it from the airport to the different resort areas? Most resorts in that area are in that 15 to 20 minute range. The ones that kind of coast along the, Bar the Bavero Beach as well as the Macau Beach. Uh, you can also use the Punta Cana Airport to fly in to see the properties in the La Romana area. So if you're staying in La Romana a little bit further on the outskirts, most transfers range from about 60 to 90 minutes, but it is all new highway, um, very safe and, and very convenient. Awesome. Kim, what would you say is the biggest difference between Punta Cana and La Romana? I definitely compare Punta Cana to being more of a city location where La Romana is a bit further in the countryside. Things take a little bit longer transfer wise. Things are a little bit more spread apart. Punta Cana definitely has the crystal clear blue sand beaches that a lot of people picture when they think down south. La Romana is still on the ocean, but it does meet the Siobhan River. So sometimes people feel the resorts there where the ocean and the river kind of meet. The water is a little bit more darker, uh, maybe a little murkier than the, the Punta Cana area. So I definitely think for those people who are pool people, the La Romana could be a good uh, fit for you. Okay, awesome. So there are many different excursions in Punta Cana. Can you tell us about one that you experienced on your most recent trip? Yeah, so on my last trip, I actually wanted to see the La Romana area. It's one that I sold often I didn't know much about. So on this one, it actually transferred us down there. So I got to drive through the town. We also stopped at the Auto de Chevron. Uh, it's definitely a place like no other. It's a replica 16th century Mediterranean village. It's right in the countryside on the Chevron River. It's actually a town that was built by local artists and it's still used today for art studios, art galleries. There's actually a whole gallery there that focuses on artwork made out of kitchen spoons. Um, I think the amazing part of this, you really feel like you're in Europe. They have beautiful cobblestone streets. They have an amazing cobblestone church. J-Lo and Mark Anthony actually got married there during that short wedding. Uh, but along with the 5,000 seat amphitheater they have built there, it is still used for concerts today. Some of the famous people that have been there in the past was Sting, uh, Shakira and Elton John. 
So after we did tour the uh, the town of Altos, we did past the Chavon River. We went into the town of La Romana, get off at the cruise pier. We actually uh, took a catamaran out past the cruises that were docked that day to the private island of Catalina. So on that island, we just had the remainder of the day as a beach day, beautiful crystal clear beaches, nice long walking private island. Uh, they had some shaded huts there as well as we got to do a full buffet. And then uh, we took our transfer back. The, the company we went with was great. They even stopped on the way. We got to do our local grocery shopping there, Judy. Uh, so we stopped at the <laughs> local grocery store for some snacks for the ride back. And it was a full day experience, but I would definitely recommend it. It was a little bit of history, a little bit of culture, a little bit of beach, um, a good fit. Kim, you had mentioned about the art galleries and I just, um, it's amazing. Some of the art galleries, I know um, I haven't been to Punta Cana as often as you have, but in Las Terrenas is amazing. And it sounds like, in uh, your area as well like the art is phenomenal so if you've got any of those people that like to visit galleries without a doubt go off property and do that eh yeah it was amazing it was nice to see it in such a unique um, atmosphere I've never ever heard of this area in the Dominican so I kind of just picked it off of a, a list of excursions and I'm so glad I did you know going through and hearing the history and the culture and what that area has to offer it's definitely unique seeing something that is so old and still being used today Wow, you guys, that sounds like such an awesome time. Yes, I really did enjoy myself. I do try to embrace all my travels. I try to see and do as much as I possibly can. Uh, so Amanda, let's talk to you. We're going to go over and talk about the other area we need to recap today, uh, the town of Puerto Plata. So earlier that you mentioned that you were lucky to travel to Punta Cana three times. How many times were you able to travel to the Puerto Plata area? Well, I've been fortunate enough to visit Porta Plata nine times. It is definitely one of my all time favorite destinations for sure to vacation at. Well, when I traveled to Porta Plata, I was fairly new to it as a bit of a beach bum, so I didn't really get out to explore much of the town or its offerings. Uh, so, what would you say the Porta Plata is best known for? Well, Porta Plata is actually known for a ton of different things. One of the biggest attractions that they have there is the kite surfing and windsurfing. The small beach town of Cabarete actually has the best windsurfing in all of the Caribbean. Lots of people will go down there strictly for that. Porta Plata also has something really cool that not that many people know about, which are they have waterfalls in the jungle called 27 waterfalls or the Demagua Falls. You can trek right up into the falls. It will get your adrenaline going. It's pretty awesome. Something that people don't realize that Porta Plata has. Porta Plata is also a very mountainous region uh, where they have a cable cart that goes right up into the mountain, which is Mount Isabella de Torres. Um, and it's actually the Caribbean's only cable car. That sounds like so much fun. I wish I would have noticed that when I was there. So on my trip to Porta Plata, it was my first trip ever. It's actually got me, me into the travel industry, uh, the history and the culture. I didn't pay attention to car rides. I was, I was kind of excited there. So how far are the transfers from the airport to the resort area? Hey, that was my first trip too, ever. So I would say that it's about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on what area that you're going to. So Sosua and Cabarete is around 30 minutes and the Playa Dorada complex, where the majority of the resorts are, is about 25 minutes from the airport. Amanda, they say Cabarete, that's such an amazing surf town, hey? And that uh, kite surfing is so, so popular right now, right? Oh, for sure. And people can rent their own uh, kite surfing stuff while they're there? Yes, they can for sure. There's tons of vendors on the beach where they'd be able to get all that equipment. Well, if they don't want to rent, know that uh, if people did want to travel and bring their own kite surfing, because I know it's so popular, they can certainly do that with their kind of vacations. They can ship their kite surfing um, equipment with them and it's a cost of uh, $100 each way Canadian to do so. Some those kite surfers are pretty seri serious and like to use their own equipment. So um, just know that they can bring their own if they want to as well. Awesome. Wow, that's great information. So Amanda, it's been years since I last vid visited. I really need to go back as soon as I'm able. Um, so can you tell us what your favorite resort is in Puerto Plata and why? Yes, so my favorite resort is the Sunscape Porta Plata, which is actually in the Playa Dorada complex. The complex is a gated community that has around 10 resorts. There's a shopping mall, there's pubs and restaurants, uh, there's a disco or two. Lots of history in that region too, right? Oh, oh. for sure. 
You yeah. Know, people have been going to Porta Plata for years and years and years, like long before Punta Cana was ever around. I don't know if your viewers realize this or not, but people just started going to Punta Cana region in about the 1984 when they started um, building these wonderful big resorts. Before that, everybody was going to Porta Plata and not just for the beach, for the history. They would, you know, lots of people still have, um, you know, been going to Porta Plata for years, like many, many, many years um, and have their own places to stay, believe it or not. So yeah, lots of history, lots of restaurants, lots of stuff to do in that town for sure. All right. Well, Amanda, my first trip there, I actually did a quick excursion. It was a city tour and we actually had the Brugal Rum Factory, but I know there's a lot to choose from. Uh, so what would be a popular excursion that you would recommend? I definitely recommend that everybody does the waterfalls and then does the cable car. Um, at the top of the mountain, they have a Christ the Redeemer statue, which is actually um, an exact replica of the one that they have in Brazil. Oh, I think that'd be really amazing to see. Uh, so I think a question that a lot of us travel agents get is definitely the different areas. Can you tell us the main difference between the Porta Plata and Punta Cana area? Um, it's definitely the beaches. So Porta Plata has the golden sand beaches, whereas Punta Cana does have those white sandy beaches. But I would say that there is way more history and culture in the Porta Plata area over Punta Cana. That sounds great. I think I'm really building up my courage to have a tour guide in every area that I'm going to visit in the future. So we just wanted to check in with Shannon. So do we have any more questions that have come in, Shannon? We sure do, actually. Quite a few to get through here, so we'll, we'll get started right away. Um, the I, at first, I, first, I just wanted to mention that there's quite a few people asking about, obviously, COVID. Um, and I just wanted to mention that, obviously, that situation is quite fluid. Um, these presentations are certainly meant uh, for for uh, dreaming and, and when we can travel again and are comfortable to, to, to do so, then um, that's what these are about, kind of uh, uh, picking things off your bucket list and, and learning uh, through these months uh, to where we want to go when we can. Um, if anybody wants to add anything about COVID, there certainly are lots of measures on the resorts um, and you can refer to our past presentations as well, which are on uh, my salifications on the YouTube channel. We certainly have referenced uh, that quite a bit in the past um, and uh, there's lots of different flexibility in booking as well right now and lots of safety measures at the resorts. Um, did, did Kim or Amanda do you want to add anything at all to that? I just wanted to address that because we had a few comments on that throughout the presentation. I think you said the right thing. It's it's fluid. Things are changing constantly. So I would de definitely recommend that you keep an eye on the uh, Health Canada, what's expected uh, as far as the COVID-19 and the quarantining coming back and that sort of stuff. And um, But I just think that things are changing so much right now that For you sure. have to constantly check and... Yeah. Uh, Without a doubt, yeah. And we're all still able to dream about those times when we will be able to travel again. And, and that's really what these are about. And we certainly love tra uh, sharing our travel stories as well throughout the each week. So we hope yeah. you enjoy that as well. So we'll jump into the questions here. There's actually one quick comment uh, that someone made actually after the Samana segment. Um, they said, I did the excursion to the na uh, nature reserve in Sa Samana. Amazing day, especially when our boat was surrounded by jumping dolphins. So that wow. sounds pretty amazing. I'd love to do that. So I'll take that in if I get there at some point. So I just wanted to mention that quickly. Um, the first question here after that, that is, uh, is there, were there seaweed problems in that area in Samana, Judy? Not when I've been there. Um, it's the, that area of uh, Dominican is on the Atlantic side. So, yes. um, you know, it waters are not, are, you know, it's hard to say because seaweed could be there today, gone tomorrow, right? Yeah. It's just one of those. It Absolutely. really depends on weather, but it's on the Atlantic side. So you don't usually get those kind of issues, but yeah. it's hard to say again. It, it could be there next week and never yeah. come back again for another eight months. So for sure. And seaweed is part of nature. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know yeah. there's been other areas that uh, it's been there for a while, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, hard to say that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And then another one here in relation to Samana was uh, what months are best to see the whales? Judy, would you? Oh, it's usually, I think it's from, uh, let me just think here. I think it's from February. Yeah, like mid-December through March, I thought. Yeah, Is that uh, yeah, that sounds right. I thought it was closer to January, but I can try and double check here while we're we're talking. It's within, but yeah, it's within those months. Winter though. months, absolutely. Yeah. It's within the yeah. winter months, absolutely. Sure. And usually, like you always hear that someone goes and they always see whales. Like that's that's their bay. That's where they come back to every year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, another mention here is. Uh, 
coming back to snorkeling, uh, is there any coral beaches in Dominican uh, Republic where is it's a good place for snorkeling among different fishes and corals? Um, I know in uh, um, in uh, Punta Cana, I believe there's uh, the the sunken ferry. Maybe I'm not sure if that's the right area or not. But um, Kim, do you know anything about that? Any snorkeling areas or Amanda? No, I don't, I don't remember anything off the beach. I know excursion wise going out, but I'm not sure right off the beach. I think a good excursion though is the Sanoa Island from Punta Cana. That would be a good one for snorkeling. I know for Samana, like even if you're not staying at the Cayo Lavantado, the ones on the island, you can go over there on an excursion, which is like you're literally yes. 10 minutes from the mainland. And the, I mean, wherever you find coral, you're going to find fish pretty much, right? So even off sure. um, the front of uh, the Las, uh, the Alportillo in uh, Las Terrenas, that's a Gran Bahia property as well, there's a coral reef right off in front and the side. So lots of people are doing some snorkeling out there as well. So just depending yeah. on, you know, if you want, you know, if you want to do it daily, you can do it off some of the resorts right off the beach area. And then, yeah. of course, if you're going out snorkeling, I would imagine they'll take, they're going to take you to the best spot to see the most. For sure. And most fish, resorts. Sure. And most resorts will take you to an area right from, right, including your package from, from the resort. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, the next one here is um, someone asked, which resort is the most popular in Punta Cana? Kim, would you be able to answer that from your expertise? <laughs> Yeah, I really think it depends on what type of trip you're looking for. The Rios tend to be a really popular brand for us. They offer some good fridge, uh, kids free where they're just paying for the flight portion. They have really good size rooms for family. Uh, one of my favorite was the Royalton. It is mostly five star luxury. Everyone's had a great time. They have some new things such as the food truck, the water parks, definitely things to do. Um, I've also done a little bit of adults only there as well. So the Bahia brand was one I went to discover there in March. I actually really liked the offerings that they had um, and again I think you can't go wrong with the the Majestics so there's a good selection just really depends on what you're looking for. Okay perfect Amanda did you have anything to add to that from your selling with your clients any most popular resorts that you sell from from Saskatoon? Definitely the reuse like yeah. like Kim mentioned the Ryu complex just because it does have the five resorts there and then it has the pool party and the casino mm -hmm. on site, um, that's definitely a huge seller for sure. I would say out of Saskatoon, the bulk of our customers love the Ryu complex. Okay, excellent, perfect. Um, skipping ahead to the next question here um, is someone asked if the there are there charter flights into Sa Samana from Western Canada, specifically Calgary. Right now, no, because um, we're in a new <laughs> world, yeah. world right now. But, um, but in normally, normal times, it's hard to say again because it's so fluid. But um, I'm not sure if they were do doing Samana from Calgary or not. But the good thing is, is the sell off vacation agents, you can do connectors yeah. uh, with Air Canada vacations that uh, if we're usually doing them out of Toronto, Montreal, we used to have them direct out of Halifax as well. So you can do connectors from Calgary to get uh, Toronto to Montreal. So all yeah. the sell off vacation agents can price that, including the airfare to go from, but not so much um, Samana from Calgary, but again, it's a new world, so who knows what next year will bring. You had mentioned that people aren't traveling now, but I did want to mention there's some amazing rates that all of your sell-off vacation agents can access right now for people that not necessarily want to travel right now, but in the in the in the fall or winter time or even next winter, now is the time to book that stuff um, because the rates are so so good and uh, they can secure their space with it now if they're interested in going to the Dominican. So they may yeah, not want sure. to. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. Um, we might not have time to get to every question here. I know our moderators, um, Sherry and Kim, are answering some of them in the background there as well. So make sure you pop on the chat there to look. Um, another one here, though, we will get to is, um, can anyone touch on what vacation providers are doing to make travel safer during the pandemic? And again, we have touched on this on some previous presentations, so certainly feel free to go back and watch some of those. But um, just quickly, maybe Kim, can you touch on, you know, what the resorts and the airlines are doing to um, uh, make the safety measures uh, great for the travelers at this time? 
Yeah, I really think the hotels, a lot of them are doing touch point cleaning. So uh, after every guest leaves, the room is stayed um, with no guests for a certain amount of time. They have some resorts up to 180 touch points that they're cleaning and disinfecting. The rooms are sealed until the next, next guest enters. I do know a lot of hotels are staying in capacities, trying to stay around that 30 to 40 percent range to allow space for social distancing. Um, the medical clinics on site, I think, have been uh, ramped up. A lot of the hotels in that area are trying to enlist the on-site testing so we can get that negative test coming home. Um, definitely, even when I was there in March and there wasn't a lot of uh, news about it, every restaurant still had hand sanitizer. We still had to sanitize entering all the other carts. They actually started serving at the buffets at that time. Uh, so I definitely Definitely think they've been proactive since before the travel advisories were enlisted. I was greatly impressed. So I think going back um, to see the extra measures put in place will be great. Uh, if yeah. you want, I can mention about the Air Canada Clean Care Plus program, uh, Shannon. So, sure. you know, Air yeah, Canada yep. Air Canada came up with the Clean Care Plus program, which has HEPA filters on board the aircraft, which clean 99.9% .9 of the air uh, while passengers are traveling. Of course, you have to wear your face mask during travel right now um, while on board the aircraft. And they put uh, protocols in place, you know, with hand sanitizing everywhere. They're doing uh, biostatic cleaning on all the aircrafts after each flight. So all of that is happening as well. So lots of safety measure, measures uh, taking place on board and Air Canada just won an award for their Clean Care Plus. Um, it's up to yes. hospital standards. So yeah. Oh, you're that's getting, amazing. You're getting a, a bag on board as well with some sanitizer, water bottle, things like that. Absolutely. So yeah, everybody gets a Clean Care Plus kit, which has um, wipes, hand sanitizers, their mask as well, as well as their earphones and bottled water. So. Awesome. That's great, ladies. Thanks so much. Nice to have a quick overview of that uh, during the presentation for sure for our viewers. Um, that's all the questions we can get to today, but thank you so much for entering all those questions. I think the moderators are still working to answer them all, so certainly take a peek back there if we didn't get to your question, but we'll we'll continue on here and uh, finish off for the for this week. Well, let's finish off with each of us giving our own top travel trip when traveling to the Dominican. Mine would be to learn some Spanish words as I definitely feel like they have the friendliest locals in the Dominican Republic. Well, Amanda, I think you can even uh, get a local down there to teach you some while you're on the vacation. Um, I think so for myself, it would be to bring the comforts from home, especially first time travelers. If you can't live without a ketchup or a hot sauce, there is a difference in, in food, cooking oils and stuff in different places. So um, always bring a hot sauce or a ketchup or even some pepper with you. Uh, definitely, I think that could help. When you're talking about comforts of home, those are great tips, uh, both Amanda and Kim, but I would also mention I'm a person that needs a face cloth. I like to have a face cloth to wash my face. So that's not a part of the Dominican culture. You won't find face cloths in all of the hotels. There's certainly in some, but not all. So I always like to head to Walmart and pick up a few face cloths and throw them in my suitcase and take them with me. The other thing that I would probably like to mention is if you have any of the uh, any family members or friends who love to bake, pure vanilla is a great thing to bring back from Dominican Republic. And the last thing that I would probably mention is that if you are doing any excursions, um, a few dollars go a long way for um, the um, excursion people for gratuity. So, um, but most important, of course, take the time to relax and enjoy this amazing destination. I truly think that the agents that sell off vacations can find something either in Porta Plata, Punta Cana, Cabaretti, Samana, wherever. There's a resort out there for everybody. So just reach out to the girls at Sell Off and the guys, sorry, to the Sell Off vacation team and uh, they'll be able to find the right spot for you. Well, thanks for well, thanks for joining us today, Kim and Judy. Do you guys have anything more you want to add before we say goodbye to our viewers? Just thanks again for having me. Always uh, love spending time with you ladies. And uh, again, uh, reach out to sell off vacations for some of those amazing things. I think I agree, ladies. I think we can talk about it all day and not get bored. So it's definitely been a pleasure chatting with both of you today. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all our viewers for joining us today. If you posted a question and it didn't get answered, Shannon and Pam will be on the chat function for about 10 minutes after the presentation to answer those questions. 
You are more than welcome to call Sell Off Vacations today. The phone lines are open until 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. You can reach any of our agents at 877-735-5633. You can also contact myself directly or Kimberly Green. As a reminder, I am based in our Saskatoon, Saskatchewan store and Kimberly is in our Dartmouth, Nova Scotia store. You will see mine and Kimberly's contact information on the screen and you're welcome to take a screenshot. Today's presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel, My Sell Off Vacations. On our channel, you can also view past presentations as well as the latest resort and airline COVID safety videos. Please join us next week, Wednesday, February 3rd, when we will have a live session all about Ryu Resorts, Ask a Ryu Expert. Thanks again and bye for now. Thank you. Thanks.